The farmers' protests in the Netherlands are likely the world's largest uprising against agricultural environmental regulation in the climate action era. Dutch farmers' raucous protests against government climate plans have sparked outrage both at home and abroad, with populists all over the world joining in, including former US President Donald Trump. But what is really going on in the Netherlands? The Netherlands, the world's second-largest agricultural exporter after the United States, is one of the most productive farming centers on the planet, but it is also one of the most polluting. Some believe that agriculture is responsible for the majority of nitrogen emissions in the Netherlands, but many others believe otherwise. According to a National Geographic article titled This Tiny Country Feeds the World, the Netherlands has become an agricultural giant by demonstrating what the future of farming could look like. However, according to The Economist, the Netherlands is the EU's biggest nitrogen polluter. Farm animals, which will almost certainly be regulated out of existence, produce manure, which mixes with urine and releases the nitrogen compound ammonia. When this contaminates nearby rivers and lakes, it can harm wildlife and disrupt sensitive ecosystems. However, no other known method of producing such abundant agricultural output with the resources available to Dutch farmers exists. So there is a trade-off between protecting sensitive ecosystems on the one hand, and maintaining a thriving Dutch agricultural industry that can support its workers while providing the market with the most affordable products, on the other. But I can hear you thinking, what is the main reason for all the fuss and chaos in the Netherlands? That is because the Dutch government unveiled extreme measures aimed directly at the agricultural industry on June 10 of this year. Farms near nature reserves must reduce nitrogen output by 70%, according to The Economist. Approximately 30% of the country's cows and pigs, as well as a significant portion of cattle and dairy farms, will have to go. In response to the new legislation, Approximately 40,000 Dutch farmers demonstrated outside government buildings and ministers' homes, and hundreds of tractors were used to blockade food distribution centers, leaving supermarket shelves empty. They've set fire to hay and manure along highways, dumped trash on roads to cause traffic jams, in protest, upside-down flags are being waved from farmhouses across the country. Prime Minister Mark Rutte, who became the country's longest-serving prime minister this month and has dealt with what is known as the nitrogen crisis in the Netherlands, has condemned the protests as unacceptable. Willfully putting others in danger, causing damage to our infrastructure, and threatening people who help clean up goes beyond all limits, Minister Rutte, who has met on several occasions with farmers, said recently on Twitter. But emotions are running high and everyone is getting more and more furious which leads to shocking events. On the evening of July 5, there was a standoff in the Dutch province of Friesland. Police allegedly fired shots at a group of farmers, who were allegedly driving tractors into police officers and their vehicles in order to get past a roadblock and onto the highway. The gunfire struck a tractor, and three people were arrested. Later the OM which means prosecution, investigated the case and they came to the conclusion that the policeman wrongly fired at the boy. There was no immediate danger to the life of the policeman or that of others at the time. Farmer son Jouk who was 16 years old and was one of the three arrested farmers was full of questions after the incident. According to his lawyer, he had no intention at all to flee from the police or to get out of a check, Jouk was not aware of any harm, and was suddenly shot at. He later told that he was fortunate and happy that he could still tell the story afterwards as it could have cost him his life. This was just one tense moment in a tens of thousands strong protest campaign that has erupted into an international clash between farmers and environmental regulators with global and potentially historic ramifications. Theo de Groot of the Dutch coalition government's Democrat 66 party says the following things about the crisis. We have to move away from the low-cost model of food production, it's time to restore nature, climate, and air, which may mean that intensive farming has no place in some areas. While the government cannot see any other solutions except for reducing the amount of farms to over 50%, the farmers are really disappointed. According to the farmers, they have been talking to the governments, provincial and national, for two years now and they have already proposed many solutions but it seems that the government has ultimately done nothing with it, the government is not willing to come even a little closer to an agreement with the farmers. 
This is why the farmers are taking tough actions. They indicate that they are disappointed that they are causing nuisance to many citizens, but that there is no other solution. This is no longer a democracy, it's a dictatorship, says Jeroen van Moanen, a farmer in Zeewold, central Netherlands, who has joined the protests. Farmers, according to van Moanen, are unfairly targeted, if you come for us and our families, you come for a farmer's soul. We've proposed a variety of solutions, but we've been ignored. Finally, they devise a strategy for livestock reduction. No other industry has reduced nitrogen as much as we have in the last 30 years. This is why there is so much emotion and pain. If you make people so very angry, you get this, says Secretary Sieta van Kiempima of the Farmers' Defence Force Action Group about the new farmers' protests around highways. You shouldn't be surprised by that. Anyone would do this if you were chased off your land and out of your home. In doing so, she is responding to criticism from road manager Rijsk Swarstedt which is the implementing organisation of the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management, who warns that this method of campaigning can cause dangerous situations. As long as the government sticks to the current goals, you will get this kind of situation, says Van Kiempima about the government's nitrogen policy. 30,000 companies are affected by this. People don't sleep anymore, there are suicides among farmers who don't take it anymore, says the FDF board member. Recent figures on the number of suicides among farmers are not available, so whether this impression is correct cannot be verified. According to calculations by the Ministry of Finance, nearly 30,000 farms could be affected by the nitrogen plans. That has calculated that some 11,200 companies will have to stop with the current plans and 17,600 farmers will have to reduce their livestock. In this way, the cabinet wants to reduce nitrogen emissions, especially in the form of ammonia, in such a way that nature can recover. Meanwhile, Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte apologised for a nitrogen map that showed where farms were most likely to close, citing great confusion. So for many people it is clear why the farmers are upset, and it is understandable that the majority of the Dutch population sympathises with them. Farmers are viewed as a hard-working segment of the population who receive a small portion of the value created by the agricultural sector, while middlemen and supermarkets reap the majority of the profits. Many people believe that farmers should not be the only ones to pay for the nitrogen crisis. So the Netherlands is not always one of the best working countries as many say. There is still a lot development needed to make it work even better for everyone, even for the farmers. This is unfortunately already the end of the video. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to click on that like button and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.